Hello, hello. Yes, you didn't think I was going to get any more in, but I did. I always come through at some point. Do I not? Do I not care enough about this podcast to keep going for the fans, those across the globe that listen to this podcast? Well, let's go. Let's talk. Let's catch up. Who's a fat boy? Four, three, two, one. Hello! I know it's been a while. I've been putting this off like crazy. I was going to have a guest on. I was supposed to do this back when, uh, uh, you know, Winnipeg correspondent Adam Kennedy was in town, but we just had so much on the, the docket that we couldn't get to him sitting down here in the studio. I was really looking forward to it, but we still have it coming up hopefully soon. I'm going to talk to him, see when he's available. Maybe a New Year's Eve one in a couple days. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But if not in the new year, we're going to nail that down for sure. Been a crazy, crazy month and a half, has it not, since the last episode. And, you know, I think I'd be insane not to comment on what's going on. Uh, Technically, today is the highest in Ontario level of COVID cases recorded. I think it's around 10.5 thousand, 10.5 K. Man, it has been absolutely crazy. It's been crazy. Everybody was letting up in the fall. Everybody thought, okay, we're getting back to normal. The theaters were coming back. People were going back to restaurants. People are feeling good about going out. And I knew, I fucking knew this shit wasn't over. I knew it was going to, we haven't seen the worst of it yet. As far as mass hysteria, and that's why at the beginning of October, I bought N95 masks because everybody was sleeping on it. Nobody gave a shit anymore. Everyone was cool with their hipster cloth masks. And I was saying, you know what? I'm fucking, if we're all going back inside now, if we're starting to do events and stuff, I need to get proper protection. And I went, I got some N95s. And just before the mass hysteria set in, I was able to buy a couple more boxes of them, but it is ridiculous that we have to do this, that it's not supplied. We should be, I can't even get to the testing part, the rapid test. Uh, I got caught up in it. I went lining up at the LCBO in York region, the one that was on that list that was supposed to have tests and they didn't have them. And everyone was lining up around the block like it was a new iPhone. And then at the mall, I tried it again. And it was the longest outdoor line I've ever seen in my life. Longest I've ever seen. Longer than, it's like, it was as long as uh, all the lines put together at Wonderland. If all the Wonderland had just all brand new rides out, everyone's going nuts. So, it's been crazy. We've got our premier Doug Ford. You know, I don't like to, I don't like to be very present on social media. I don't like to talk to people. I don't like to tweet at people. It's pretty rare for me, but I have to tweet at that fucking idiot because he's really fucked us up. And I don't understand how stupid we are to vote him in. You fell for this populist shit, you fucking dummies. Now look at it. We're in a crisis. Everybody's lining up in minus 10 degree weather for these fucking tests while he's going to the cottage. I and he probably he probably could get voted in again. That's how fucking dumb we are. This pandemic has made us even dumber. This guy doesn't give a shit about you. All he cares about is getting that fucking highway. So let's I, I'm not gonna talk too much about Ontario Box because you know what? Not a lot of people in Canada listen to this podcast. This is for the international people. This is for the Americans. Okay, you've had your clown for four years. Now you've got, you know, that old Joe, <laughs> which I don't know. They don't seem like anyone I talked to that they, they were, they were the best of the worst choice. Not going to definitely not a two termer here with the VP or the president. So it's been, it has been a little nuts with all the COVID stuff, stuff getting shut down and protocols. And it feels like now with this Omicron 
we're 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 done outrunning this disease. We're all gonna get it. So it's like the best thing we can do is be as protected as possible. Get vaccinated. Get boosted if you can. And just hope that when you do get it, because you're gonna get it. If you're listening to this podcast right now, I'm telling you right now, you're going to get it. You're going to get COVID. Okay. So get the the vaccine. So the effects aren't as bad. Maybe it'll be just a mild cold. Maybe it'll be a bad cold, but it's not going to throw you in the hospital. You know, some researchers are saying that it's getting weaker as it's, you know, that's what I kind of heard from the beginning of this whole thing. The more, you know, the more variants there are, they, they're more infectious, but they're not as serious. But I don't know how much that affects non-vaccinated people. So that is a worry because there are people in my lives that I'm just kind of like, well, we just got to, we just got to accept what happens. I can't, I can't pound on their head with my fists to get them vaccinated. If this is the decision that they want to make, then we have to let them make it. And if there are consequences, if there are dire consequences that happen because of it, that is on them. That is not on me. So... I don't want any vax, anti-vaxxers or anything. I don't want any of them to die. I, I hope that they get a mild cold and then they, they can continue to spew all their bullshit. But I am worried. I'm really worried because now it went from a disease that you kind of knew somebody who had it or through somebody or somebody's mom. Yeah, you know, it wasn't very clear. And now everybody, it seems like one in four people have it. So it's it's getting a little scary, you know. The restaurant up near my mom's, this big stupid brewery. I hate it. It kind of reminds me of the Titty Twister and from Dust Till Dawn. Have you seen from Dust Till Dawn how in the middle of a desert there's just this strip club and this, you know, kind of on the back of a <laughs> Aztecian pyramid? And that's what this bar near my mom's is like. It's this giant brewery in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing around it. There's like a decommissioned oil plant. Or, you know, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's a river. So it's actually quite picturesque. But the owners of this restaurant decided they don't want to get vaccinated. And they want to ignore all the fucking shit where, you know, people coming in and needing to wear masks and showing their cards, their vaccine stuff. So they decided to go that route. Okay. Husband and wife own this place. They both get COVID. The husband's dead. And apparently the wife is on her way out. She was supposed to die before Christmas. I haven't heard an update because, you know, it's town gossip for my mom. But the husband is dead, and she is apparently on her way out. She's on a ventilator. So that's what I'm just saying, right? It's like until you start to know people that are getting this thing and are dying of it or getting long COVID, you know, then it starts to become, I think that's what we need. There's just too many people that aren't affected by it, that haven't had a major loss in their life because of it. They haven't seen that yet. So then when it's... Nothing's happening around you. It's just the conspiracy theories just sink in. They just like a like the plugs on a bald man, just finding those little spots to to fake hair growth. You know, one day I might have to get plugs. I don't know. Anyway, we're uh, we're in a, a crisis mode right now. In some ways, a weird crisis mode where it's like scary, and then I don't know. I think we're all just getting tired and it's like, we just got to let this thing take, take its course because, <laughs> because nothing's working. Our politicians aren't helping us. Uh, it's a fucking shit show out there trying to get tests and everything else and vax. It's just crazy. It's crazy. I went to see Jesus Christ superstar two weeks ago to the day. And it was like a day before everything shut down where they like started restricting capacities for shows and comedy venues, all that stuff. And I'll tell you something, this is the second show I've done in the last like month or so. 
and I was very uncomfortable. I didn't want to go. It was a shit show of a night. I won't even get into it. I went with my mother, but she's someone that is struggling with anxiety, with PTSD, I think, right now. So it, it's very tricky to go out in public when you you're you're not you're not in control of your anxiety. I know it's a hard thing to say, but you can get some control over it. She was not. Anyways, it was a crazy night full of anxiety attacks. And then we go to the show and I've never seen Jesus Christ Superstar. I know nothing of it. I just thought, you know, I've been to enough musicals to know that they're not, the song is a big part of it, but there's, there's some, there's some, comedic banter there's some dialogue you know there's a little bit of a break and this is actually a thing there are certain uh musicals like Les Mes that are just sung through completely there's you know but it's not a common thing with musicals and I've definitely seen a lot of musicals in my day since I was a little kid and I haven't really experienced too much of this and it was hell. I just couldn't even, I couldn't pay attention. I'm wearing my N95. I'm freaking out thinking like, holy fuck, I'm definitely going to get in here. But I think it was the N95 that saved me. It's been two weeks today. I've probably had, I've had a PCR test since then. I've had three rapid tests at least and everything's been good and negative. So I did not get it. I've been symptom free. It's been two weeks. If I had it from then, I would have it by now and it would probably be done. So yeah, absolutely crazy. That show is shut down. They've shut down Come From Away. It's just been, you know, it, theater's going dark again. Theater's going dark in the in the big cities. And you know what? I can't I can't enjoy these shows wearing masks and all this shit and attention. I'm done. I'm done until we get out of this shit where I can go into a theater without a mask on. So I don't know how long that's going to take. But I can't do it anymore. I can't. I'm not going to sit there and waste my time where I'm just like counting the time on my watch waiting for this shit to be over. I can't do it anymore. There's no comedy shows. There's no drag shows. There's no theater. There's no fucking. I'm not going to any sporting events. I'm done. I'm done until it's fucking over. I will stay home. I will watch TV. I will watch movies. I don't give a fuck. All right. But the thing that I do give a fuck about are birthdays. We got some hot fucking birthdays today. All right. Lily Wachowski. Wachowski? Lily Wachowski? You know the Wachowski sisters? That's a crazy story. That's pretty wild. Kind of nice that they're able to uh, discover their their truth together and come out. But... But, you know, they gave us The Matrix and the new one's out now. I haven't watched it yet, but, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll always take a peek. I mean, they did some really crazy stuff with that first movie. Jude Law is 49. This guy, I love Jude Law. I don't know. He's just a lot of fun to watch, that guy. He was made to be in front of the camera, am I right? Watch The Young Pope. Watch The New Pope, which is season two. And apparently they're doing another Pope series, the third one. And uh, it, I think it's great. I, I really enjoyed it. Alison Brie. It's 39, you know, Mad Men community. 39. You know, yeah, she's around my age. John Void is 83. John fucking Void, the, that fucking family. Fucking Angelina. John Void, this fucking conservative asshole. God, I hate when they get gnarly like that because he is a good actor too. But his fucking politics is just. I mean, I guess it's yeah, it's annoying everywhere. Diego Luna is 42. Narcos Mexico played Felix Gallardo. Very good job. I really liked his performance. Smoking them cigs. I love it when they're smoking them cigs in the TV shows. They look so cool with their cigs. Where are my cigs? Where are my prop cigs? I got to look cool in the scene. I need my prop, prop cig. You know, cigarettes just look cool. Here's a guy who probably never smoked in his life. Ted Danson. He's 74. You think he smoked before? You think Teddy? Teddy Dance. 74? Fuck, man. All these, like, people I grew up watching as a young kid are... They're getting fucking old, man. 74? Shit. Danny McBride. Very funny. The Righteous Gemstones. New season. This is a free plug on the podcast for them. Coming out, I think, at the beginning of January. Danny McBride's 45. He's a funny fucking guy 
funny fucking guy. Patricia Clark since 62. She's one of my favorite actresses. I love her voice. She was fantastic in Six Feet Under, amongst many other things. Mary Tyler Moore would have been her birthday today, but she peaced out before the pandemic back in 2017. She knew it was coming probably. Mary Tyler Moore probably went to a goddamn clairvoyant. Uh, Michael Kudlitz. Michael Kudlitz. You wouldn't know his name, but you know his mug. He's 57. I think uh, he was on The Walking Dead for a while. He was like a redhead with the handlebar mustaches. You know him. Guy Pfeiffer's 47. 47? Was he like... He's 47? So was he like 29 when fucking... When uh, Eminem's movie came out? Was he like just a young buck? That's crazy. Last one. Ennis Esmer, he made the cut. I know this guy. Ennis Esmer's 43. You would know him from the TV show Blind Spot. He's been on my other podcast, Confederacy of Dunks, a hell of a lot as a guest over the years. Ennis is 43. Happy birthday, Ennis. Let's get to a fitness update. Fitness update. Okay, like so, I got like I got a bit of a fitness update. I've got a little bit of a, uh, a health update. You know, it's been kind of an interesting year for me for that, uh, learning some things. Uh, you know, finding out that you got a, a few little nicks in your health armor that that you need to smooth out a little bit. Uh, you know, I've talked about the fatty liver stuff, and you know, uh, uh, it is impossible to control your saturated fat intake at this time of year when you're eating chocolate like every day. Yeah, we're just heavy into the desserts, although I am working out very consistently. I'm working out three to four times a week still. Uh, You know, my Apple Watch had a thing where I had to get 920 minutes of exercise this month to earn the badge, and I did it yesterday. I did do it, and I'm definitely going to finish well over a 1,000, so that is good. I'm keeping up with that because if I didn't, from all of the sweets and the desserts and everything else, I would be 400 pounds right now. It's just it's just too easy, and it's, you know, we do, uh, my wife and I really like to look especially when we're eating a box of chocolate or something and just seeing the nutritional value of one of those chocolates. You know, I feel like I work out for 30 minutes and it's gone with one of those chocolates. But, um, yeah, I think what was the one thing I found? out? Yeah, so I went for an eye doctor appointment, had to get a new prescription, had to get all the tests done. I got a new optometrist, my last one. And not great, I will say, you know, there's like one eye condition that's pretty obvious in people that, that, uh, that they have, you know, it, it starts to show itself early and doesn't really get to be a problem until you're much older. Some people it does, depending on the pressure of your eyes. My pressure is fucking mint, pretty much as low as you can go right now. So that's good. But I do, and, and this is interesting, I'll, I'll get into it, but I do have glaucoma in my future. I'm going to be one of those old motherfuckers. Now, that's if I decide to live that long. I don't know if I will. That might be my choice. But I might, uh, if I do get into my older age, I'm going to have to monitor my eyes a little bit and make sure that uh, my glaucoma isn't acting up because apparently it is a genetic thing. There's nothing in your 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 diet that you can do to cause it or slow it. It's like the only thing that you have to kind of watch for is you know, low blood pressure and high blood pressure are kind of bad for it because it can fuck with the pressure of your eyes. So what really glaucoma is, is I, it looks insane. It looks like I've got these little balls of fire at the <laughs> around my retina or something. And, you know, eventually uh, I start to, you go blind, but like with tunnel vision. So it's very, it's a very, very slow, slow disease. Uh, So it wouldn't be like, you know, over a week, all of a sudden I'm looking down a tunnel, but once it does start, which it hasn't, uh, then it, you know, you, it does, you can't go back. (laughs) So so you have to take drops and stuff. So it's like, I got to keep going to the appointments. This is, this is another goddamn appointment I got to have the rest of my life, which we all should. Eye health is very important. Of course, it should be covered in our fucking stupid country. 
Excuse me, sorry. When I do this podcast, I get a little burpy because I'm talking a lot. And I'm not used to talking at all in this pandy. So, yeah, I got the glaucoma, I guess, or early glaucoma. I don't know what the fuck. He said there are three stages of it. And he's like, you're about in between one and two. You're somewhere in there. So he's like, we'll just monitor it. As long as your eye pressure is good, you're good. So that's really it. And yeah, I guess there's surgery and stuff too. Um, but uh, isn't there weed involved? Don't people with glaucoma have to smoke weed? I think you start to get eye pain or something like that. So weed apparently helps. So I'll be smoking dubs in my old age if I make it to there. Cause <laughs> I don't know, folks, I think there, I think that that'll be a fucking miracle for any of people of my generation to live into their seventies and eighties. That is for sure. But anyway, feeling, feeling, uh, feeling good, you know, feeling healthy, uh, working out, and I'm just going to keep consistent with that. I've uh, created some gamification for the exercise bike. I've put up, I did some measurements of where I am currently living. And I kind of stretched it out over Google Maps to see exactly how far I am from certain places so that I can kind of, you know, um, have it as a goal to reach some of the, you know, the these milestones. So I just hit 1,600 kilometers Full year of having this bike now that I got now. You've known past episodes what it, what I've gone through, but it uh, it's been good. I, I'm in a good place with the bike. I love the bike, and yeah, you know, I've been doing a lot more. I've upped my my strength and conditioning, which is good. So yeah, I got uh, 1,600 uh, kilometers from where I am right now is Jackson, Mississippi. I don't know much about Jackson, Mississippi, other than it has a very racist past. And, you know, uh, Mississippi Burning is a movie I need to watch. Maybe I'll watch Mississippi Burning now that I've hit the milestone, and I'll let you know what I think about the movie, because I know nothing of it. I just know it was referenced in a joke by Dave Chappelle once. Uh, just uh, uh, amazing how... R- you know, blatant racism was in that movie, like Mississippi burning. Wow. So I'm going to understand that joke a lot better. So I will watch Mississippi burning. Uh, the next one is, uh, new Orleans and I think it's 2100. So it's going to, it's going to take me a little bit, a little bit of time, but I don't know. What do I watch? Like an Anne Rice movie? I I think I'll, I'll have to think on that. Uh, Maybe that's what I'll do. Every milestone I hit, I'll watch something, you know, based on uh, the <laughs> the distance I'm trying to travel here, folks. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think we've been able, I think you're able, I'm able to move on to some health news. Health news. Okay, so... Th- that is health oh, <laughs> yes, I understand. It is health-related news. <laughs> you forget about your stings sometimes. I've just got two stories to talk to in the health news. Try to keep this thing going. Uh, we do have this story that uh, it, it was from like the beginning of November. I meant to talk about it. You know how on this podcast I do like to talk about diets sometimes. Weird diets. What well, What are the people out there doing? You know, is it a 5-2? Are they doing Weight Watchers? Is it noon? What are you doing? And apparently there's this guy, and, and you know, we'll talk about this a little bit, but it's called the Caveman Diet, okay? So let me tell you about this guy. His name's Brian Johnson. He's known as the Liver King, and he eats a daily diet of raw liver, testicles, and bone marrow. It is not to everyone's taste, but bodybuilder Brian swears by his daily caveman diet uh, and he's been living on rare meat for 20 years, 20 years. So apparently he has a social media account showing him eating all these testicles and raw stuff. So he's, you know, he's, he's thinking this is the proper way to eat because this is what he thinks caveman. Does he even do the research? Did caveman even eat that? He says that uh, we began to reintroduce the nutrition of our ancestors, seasonal fruits and vegetables, nose to tail animals, including the most nutrient dense part of all. And apparently his kids were, you know, always getting sick and hives and allergies and they tried to cut out this or that, but it was the nuts. It was eating the animal nuts that really (laughs) changed everybody. What is it, like a Cadbury egg? Oh, God, I'm sorry I had to say that. You know, the problem with eating raw meat, and it's something that I always think of, is that it does have contaminant, contain, contaminant, 
contaminants. Jesus has contaminants like salmonella, listeria, and E. coli. This is stuff like that that, you know, gets destroyed when you cook meat properly, but you really have to cook it. And, you know, I don't know, eating, eating some goat's nuts. I don't know whose nuts he, he, <laughs> what, what animals nuts he prefers, pork nuts. I don't know. Um, I, I, I would probably want to start with pork nuts. I feel like, you know, bacon nuts are always <laughs> bacon nuts that gotta be good so the caveman diet this guy's liver king swears by it i don't know you know i think of the movie encino man and he didn't seem to have any interest in eating raw stuff when he got out of there he went right to the 7-eleven he's having you know <laughs> frosties and slurpees uh candy milk duds uh, it didn't seem like there were ever any scenes of him eating raw nuts uh so you know and that movie is very <laughs> very historically accurate it has been it has been championed for being uh you know very accurate so <laughs> watch encino man you'll, you'll get what i'm saying uh he's never had a bath he had his first bath in thousands of years it was great so yeah, if you are interested in the caveman diet, though, I don't know where you can get it. You might have to go to a wet market, I think they're called, uh, to get the testicles. It must be tough. Does he fly them in? Does he fly the nuts in, the bacon nuts? Because bacon nuts seem like something that you would eat at the X. I would actually, if, yeah, like I was at the X and I got that carnival smell in the air and I passed by one of the booths and they're like, hey, we got some bacon nuts. All right, yeah, I'll give it a shot. So what are they, just like dough rack wrapped in bacon? No, they're actual pig nuts, and we deep fry them. Um, and they taste just like bacon balls. Uh, <laughs> so that's... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the caveman diet. You got to check it out. And if you do do the caveman diet, please get back to me. I want to hear how it goes. So a little bit, no, we're, we're still on the balls topic for the, the this other thing I want to talk about. Uh, but it's, uh, I want to talk about the Tim Beebs, okay? Now it's, you know, this is a fast food fitness podcast. One of the only ones in the business. I've talked about that before. We are pro fast food. We know that it's bad for you. We know that there's chemicals in it that can melt steel, uh, that can bring down the twin towers. <laughs> Certain thing you could, you could throw fast food at the twin towers. They would become come ta- toppling down. So we're, we're all, you know, we're, we're not stupid here, folks. We do know at the podcast that fast food is bad for you. But the Tim Biebs have come out now. Uh, to my American listeners, you know Justin Bieber. He he did partner with a, a famed donut shop in Canada called Tim Hortons, and now he has his own little bite-sized donuts. And I had to try them. You know, I, I had to do it for the podcast. And I'll I'll take you through it real quickly. The cal- caloric intake of them. They come in about a 10-pack. That's about the standard pack you can get. 10 of them. You've got the birthday cake waffle, Tim Biebs. You've got the chocolate white fudge, Tim Biebs. And you've got the sour cream chocolate chip, Tim Biebs. Now, these all feel like it seems like everybody's loving the birthday cake one the best. I do agree. One of those is about 74 calories, in one. So if you get a 10 pack and you ask for just the birthday cake, that's going to get you around 740 calories. Uh, which, which, you know, it's pretty substantial. It's pretty substantial. Uh, you know, maybe just have one or two, maybe a three pack would be nice. You know, just have one of each. That's all you should really have because 74 calories for one of these little donuts is not great. Now, this was my favorite of the three. Did try it. Uh, you know, I do love a birthday cake a lot, like the ones with the sprinkles and stuff. Obviously, Bieber does too. Obviously, Bieber does too. But it just seemed like all of these these donuts just were like, had chunks of crap on the outside of like a glazed chocolate or a glazed, you know, uh, just like a plain glazed kind of thing. You know, it's, it, it just chunks of shit. Like even the chocolate white fudge tim bits it just like chunks of white on a chocolate glazed 92 calories for that one i don't think it's really worth it you know that extra 18 calories i don't know uh, again i would just be fine with the birthday cake so you got 92 calories and then you've got the 
sour cream chocolate chip, which strangely I wouldn't have thought, but it is the most has the most calories at 104. Okay, so you got the birthday cake one is the technically, and I'm air quoting here, folks, the best one for you. But the sour cream chocolate chip is the worst with 104 calories. So if you're you're over 10 pack of those, you're over a thousand calories. That is a lot. That is a lot. Is anyone ordering just those? Give me them sour cream chocolate chip Tim Babes. I was embarrassed to order them. I was honestly embarrassed. I felt like a little believer uh, in line, you know, hoping to get a kiss or something, you know, like I, I I felt like as I pulled my car up to the drive through there'd be posters of him on the windows and stuff uh, of my car. I just, you know, that feeling, I just, I felt very embarrassed and I don't think I'll ever buy them again because, you know, I like the other dim bits, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm good with the other ones and I'm getting older now. I'll even have an old fashioned. I'll have a dry ass little nub that I can, you know, get dry throat from and then slop her down with some coffee. You know, that's what happens when you get older. I, I'm too old for this Tim Beeb stuff. And I got to say, if they were a better donut, I would be, you know, I would, I'd be more on board, but it's a, it's a pretty bullshit donut and it's full of calories and fat and sugar. So, you know, I'm just saying, go to, go somewhere else. Fuck this. Okay, so we got some other shit. Okay, we got to talk about this. Now, I don't know where we are exactly. How are we doing for time? Okay, so of course, I'm around the 30-minute mark. Thank you for sticking with me here on the podcast. Thank you to my American listeners. Thank you to the Irish listeners. Thank you to the Armenians. I always like to call it the Armenians. The Italians, the Germans that are listening to this podcast. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We are now on, uh, well, we have been on Spotify this whole time, but now Spotify is doing a rating system. So if you could go on Spotify and give the podcast a rating, I would really appreciate it. If you could give it the five star, you know, you don't have to write anything. It doesn't look like there's anywhere to write comments and stuff. It's just a rating. It should be right there in the subscription. Uh, if you access the podcast on Spotify, please give me five stars so that we can continue to circulate around the world because I do not promote this. I do not have a Twitter. I do not have an Instagram. I do not, t- I don't tweet it. I don't do anything. If you have found it, you are the lucky ones. You are the lucky ones who love fast food and fitness. So anyway, the other shit. You know, if you've been listening to this podcast, you know I always have to talk about Peloton. So I was licking my lips when I saw that it appeared in this new reboot of Sex in the City, <sighs> and one of the main characters in it gets on a Peloton, and then he gets off and he dies. Okay, that's the that's the gist of it. And because of that fictional death, Peloton stocks dropped eleven percent because. <laughs> this guy dying this is how stupid we are like why are people selling the, like what how is that how is that affecting stocks when a fictional character and then the company has to come out and and like talk about this fictional character it might as well be a cartoon might as well be an archie cartoon and saying that like he had bad health he had a heart attack before he had a rich lifestyle so then, like, Peloton's in a panic. Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I don't know if this is, like, some corporate Andy Kaufman that has been set up, you know, where they were like, well, let's tank the stock, and then we'll have the release this commercial with Big in it, and, you know, and it'll be, like, thumbs up to the camera. I don't know if they're that smart and risky. I just don't know, because it's been rough for Peloton, you know? Like, they've they've taken some hits over the last six months. So after the episode airs, 48 hours later, they have a commercial with the actor, Chris Noth, showing himself alive and well and, you know, using uh, euphemisms for sex and stuff with his Peloton. And he's got his little Peloton instructor there with him. And it's very sexy and everything. And, uh, you know, they thought that uh, we're in the clear now. We're in the clear. See, Chris Noth is alive. The character is dead. The actor is alive. He's thriving. And then, and then... (laughs) 
all these accusations come out about this actor that he's sexually assaulted all these women over the last 20 years. And he's been canceled. He's been completely canceled. He's been dropped from this and dropped from that. And, you know, he's done. And then now Peloton is back in panic mode again. They have to pull the commercial and they've got to pivot and they put in uh, Brett Gelman, who you'd know him to see him. He was in Stranger Things and he was in the episode of Man Seeking Women with me. Uh, very, very funny actor. He was on Fleabag. So they're, they're you know, he, he's... <laughs> I think they run a check on him just to make sure. Hold on a second, character actor. You, you've been fucking and fucking around. So everything's good with Brett Gelman. Anyway, so don't be surprised if Pelotons are $1,000 cheaper in the next few months because I think that it's just going to get worse and worse for them, and they are going to – I bet you it's going to come to like $500 for a Peloton. That is my prediction. Now I want you to mark it. I'm going to mark, take out your little book of Matt's predictions. I want you to mark it. Okay? The last thing I'll talk about. The last thing I'll talk about. Is the Nessie Cheeto. Now, have you heard of this? This shit drives me friggin' wild. I don't understand auctions, you know? I don't understand the value of things, why this would have value. There's apparently a Cheeto, you know, like Chester Cheeto. There's a Cheeto that looks like Nessie, the Loch Ness Monster. Now, no one's ever really seen Nessie. There's that one picture, and I think it has been verified that that picture might be a whale's penis. Coming up for a little air, doing a little belly turn, dick out of the water. I think... That is what that Nessie photo is. I could be wrong. Never take my word for anything on here. You research it your goddamn self. But I'm pretty sure that the Loch Ness Monster is a monster in itself. Now, that is true. But it's a whale's penis monster. Anyway, there's a Cheeto, which, as you can imagine, I'd say the majority of Cheetos could look like this Nessie character. And it's on... Auction for like a million or something? Someone's going to buy it for a million? This Cheeto? What, are you going to put it in glass in your house? You donate it to a museum and people are going to come to look at this Cheeto? Say it looks like Nessie? The whale penis? I don't understand humanity. I, we can be so smart. We came up with these vaccines so fast. You know? But the Nessie, the Nessie Cheeto brings us way back down to being cavemen again. And I guess that's why some of us are eating testicles. <laughs> well, guys, we got it in. I hope, I hope, I hope I can get one in on New Year's Eve. I'm going to see. I'm going to check out on schedule. If not, maybe I'll just go alone again. Maybe a quick one. All right, bye.